welcome back. And here we are now. I've got Robin Whitaker with me, and you're from Auckland Waitamata. And we were just talking before about um, M. Um, I forgot the word. M technology. Uh, yes. Uh, and um, tell me again, very roughly, a summary of what you what your work is. Uh, so at the National Institute for Health Innovation at the University of Auckland, our team has been working on developing M-Health interventions. So basically we take uh, what the evidence says about what works for particular issues uh, and we try and apply that to uh, how we can deliver it to people directly using mobile communication technologies. And mobile. Mobile. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Right. And so what conditions are you helping people with? So we particularly started off with sort of healthy behaviour change. The first thing that we did was about helping people to stop smoking. Uh, and then we have done things like weight management programs, uh, alcohol interventions, um, uh, helping people to be more physically active or to eat better. We're working on one at the moment that's around problem gambling. Uh, but we've also gone into patient groups. So we have a program at the moment for uh, people with poorly controlled diabetes. And it's really just about motivating and supporting them to be in better control of their glucose in between their clinic visits. And I presume you're collecting data on this and, and, and I presume it's working, is it? Uh, that's important. Yeah, so what we've shown basically is that, um, that messaging works really well. So uh, a lot of our programs just use text messaging or they use messaging in combination with, with web. Uh, but the messaging, the frequent prompts and reminders that come to you via a message over your personal mobile phone, you know, they, they, they feel very personal and they just remind people about their behaviour that they're trying to change and why they're trying to. And we've shown that it works really well. Is, is there anything it doesn't work with? Um, so we've, we did experiment with um, a very universal depression prevention program for teenagers. Uh, so this was some time ago. It was very multimedia over the mobile phone using video clips, role models and uh, little cartoon episodes. Uh, and we tried to teach teenagers cognitive behavioural therapy techniques. Uh, over their mobile phone. Oh, you would have thought that would work and the data well, was disappointing? they really liked it. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> and good. And they told us immediately afterwards that they did feel more positive and yes. they understood about uh, identifying negative thoughts and yes. placing them with positive ones. But in the research study, we couldn't prove that it had a long-term effect. Right, right. So I think um, there's still promise there. I think it's just we need to do a bit more work on that one. For sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, the other successful chronic mm -hmm. conditions then, so smoking, diabetes, mm -hmm. weight management. Yes, uh, uh, we're doing a program at the moment uh, for people who've had a heart attack. So those people who had their first admission for, for heart attack, they get told they should do a cardiac rehab program. And we know that cardiac rehab works really well, but a lot of people never go because we generally require them to go somewhere. Uh, so we have developed a comprehensive cardiac rehab program that's delivered basically over the mobile phone. We've uh, piloted that and it looks really positive. We've had some really good results and now we're, uh, we're moving into a bigger trial of that. So very hopeful that that will be effective as well. Brilliant. Now we were talking about the shared electronic record earlier on. Um, so is this going to link into shared electronic records? I think that's where it's going. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, uh, because we work in a research environment, we generally develop these as fairly standalone programs mm -hmm. and then you know, try to make sure that they're effective. But uh, certainly where I think mobile health is going in the future is that it will be far more integrated into the health services. So the idea is that uh, clinicians from their, you know, their front page, from the patient screen or patients from their own portal will be able to just you know, push the button and, and design their own in-health support program and, and get registered on it immediately. And then the data can go back into right. that portal right. as well so that it can feed back what it is that they're doing and how they're going. That's fantastic. So we've had a few people talking today on a three-year plan. By three years, we will have. Mm -hmm. So by three years, what will we have with your um, health technology? Uh, so I think what we'd like is we, we've also started experimenting with um, uh, personal sensors and monitors. And so what we'd like to develop is a far more comprehensive platform for people, I think, where they can go through their own patient portal and select the programs and the modules that they would like to receive over their mobile phone and also select what sensors and monitors they may be using or may be interested in using and that that incoming data will then feed into a much more personalised program that will adapt and change with the individual over time according to what their needs are as they keep going through the program. So I think, I think that's where we want to have. We want to have a, a common platform 
that patients can access themselves and what they'll end up with is much more personalised and adaptive programmes over time. That's wonderful. We were talking before, we had um, an ophthalmologist from Gisborne and he put up a wonderful slide mm. which gave the data, I don't know if you saw it, that yeah. more people have access to mobile phones than they do toilets and, uh, and um, <laughs> a compelling piece of data that really, so I presume that is not an issue. Um, have you had an idea roughly how many people do and don't have mobile phones in New Zealand? Yes, so the figures that we have are that uh, we have something like 112% penetration of mobile phones. Lord so it basically right. means that there are more mobile phone subscriptions in yes. New Zealand than there are people. Right. So of course some people have two. Yes. So there are some people, you know, probably at either end of the age spectrum yes. uh, who don't have their own personal phone. Mm-hmm. But uh, even then, often someone else in the family or who's helping to care for them will have uh, a mobile phone and maybe the more appropriate person to, to receive the program and to be helping that individual with their health anyway. That is outstanding. Yeah. Awesome. Well, look, this time next year, let me know how you're getting on. And, and, uh, God, really Great. to talk to you. Thank, Thank you very you. much indeed. Thank you.